really you're focusing on helping a lot of women. We we deal with a lot of people don't talk about it, but we deal with a lot of stuff. We try to push back. And I love the idea that you're an author and, and business person and and you have a new novel that came out earlier this year called Crossroads. And it's probably interjected and kind of into your life a little bit. Can you kind of say what um say cross <laughs> what brought this on to write this book? Well, it's several factors. Um, I'm a businesswoman. And as I was developing as a businesswoman, I really wanted, I, I saw where women didn't support each other. And instead, they trip each other in the hall. We're on the, but yet we were competing against the, the big man's club where they're walking around supporting. They may still want each other's jobs, but guess what? It, if it's between and them and somebody else are going to push them into the door and so they can follow right in. And women, on the other hand, they didn't do that. And so I started working on the novel, but at the same time, it's a fiction novel. It's, it's based out of Indianapolis and it's on a high energy type A personality, which we're all taught we're supposed to do a workaholic, which is a core value, um, at least in my family and most mid Midwestern um, people. And um, what happens when there's a ball that's thrown in the middle of all that, that and completely changes the trajectory of your life. At the same time, you're trying to balance home, career, and your fitness, your health, and everything else. So I kind of threw it all in there, and you follow Paris through it, and you find you're also finding a piece of you, you know, where you're like, wow, I really need to find life balance, and uh, maybe I need to reconsider some of my relationships. Uh, yeah, you're right. I think it's we, women in general, just from my perspective, we had a lot on our shoulders, especially if you have uh, children and and um, married, and if you stay married, right, everybody's got a different issue as a, your, in your childhood upbringing, your, how your parents <laughs> are involved, um, or they're not involved, right, it just, uh, and I like how you, you probably, I don't know how old you are, but probably the same generation, I was, not many um, women were in my field a little bit, so I stood out a little bit being female, but at the same time, I was to downgraded <laughs> that makes sense well you're a girl but, yeah huh. see my sister told me luckily I had a, a professional um sister that was older than me but she always said do not ever make the coffee in your meetings <laughs> right well why wouldn't you want to make the coffee everybody wants coffee but she says because you'll always be designated to make it yes that's true and that is so true for women. We were nurturers and we want to make sure things are right. And we may be the organizers, but if you do not want to be designated as the coffee girl, and there's nothing wrong with it, if that's your passion, if you love coffee, that's great. But if you're trying to make it up the, the corporate um, ladder, making the coffee designates you as the right. administ administration, not as the executive. Right leaders. So there's certain things that we have to consider when we're in our own behaviors in business. Right. I, I, um, at one point I'm from, I was raised in Georgia, even though my, I'm a military brat. I did go to later transfer to university of Wisconsin. And one of the, you're talking about the women, they were down side so down. Cause I had an accent to them. I didn't know I had an accent. And so <laughs> they, they, you know, it's just stuff like that. I don't know why. It's kind of like the mean girls, even from school to work. Maybe that's kind of what you're referring to, turning the mean girls. Exactly it. We have to learn to support each other through right. adversity, resilience, um, um, life balance, friendships, work, you know, because if, if we're not going to do it as women, right. then who's going to do it? Who has the same? experience that that a woman has other than other women so you have to to realize that it doesn't mean that you can't still compete or try to to um to be the best in your field but it does mean that you have to learn from each other um some of the the pillars of resilience is finding your own purpose and self-actualization is part of that um you can't cope with life ad adversities if you don't 
have some kind of foundation that you're working from before you even hit that adversity. So um, mindfulness is another one where you can identify your emotions of why you're reacting to people in different ways, maybe negative or positive, um, and make sure that you're not falling into a negative mindset. Like um, one of the key um, quotes in my in Crossroads is, Envy makes the bones rot. Envy? And that, yeah. in, and that, and that comes from Proverbs because it says in Proverbs, it says anger is cruel and fury is overwhelming, which is true. You know, when you get angry about something, but you can get over, but nothing stands before jealousy. And then it, and then it continues and says, envy makes the bones rot. So if, if you allow yourself to get in a negative mindset, now you could be envious and want to excel like somebody else and keep it in a positive motivational aspect, or you can turn around and make it a, a negative one where it completely takes over your character and th then you become the mean girl where you're talking about someone's back or right. uh, picking up their notebook and throwing it in the trash or whatever it might be that you've experienced or seen or, um, you know, or talking to the boss about the other person because you, you don't want to be that person. You know, you want to be someone that thrives and on their on your own merit. And so that's so important that we end up um, supporting each other um, through our own adversities. And work is hard, you know, you, and keeping life balance is hard. So where are we going to be if we don't do it with each other? And you had mentioned... Um... I, I'm what we're saying made me think of self worth. You think some people don't have; they feel they're valued. Maybe you think that's some of yeah, that. Yeah, I think, and or they're questioning their value. Um, my dad used to always tell us as because there was five of us kids, and of course that's not fair. Or you have these little things, and so you right. know, or it might be the excuse that you have that you're not performing or getting the same treat or whatever. He, he would always say, "Do not." Compare yourself to others. Yes. Because if you compare yourself to others, you destroy yourself and your own purpose. And yes, I think that um, many a times when we're comparing, we're destroying our, our self-worth and our self-image and and the skills. You know, how can you perform in your life? It doesn't matter whether it's cooking a meal or whether it's um, working in your work work life, how, if you aren't valuing your own skills, nobody else is either. So, um, yeah, I think that you're right. I think it has a lot to do with self worth um, and your relationships and how how you maintain them. Right. It's just a, a crazy. I mean, the world's always changing constantly, but I think that's another thing. People are so afraid of all this change going on. 